Hey guys, it's Jordan from Two Guys in Traffic, and this is the new F-250 Super Duty. Usually it's used to tow big, heavy things, but today we're gonna test it out in traffic. So I'm gonna head to Brian's house, then go to Starbucks and hit the road. All right, so uh, we went to Starbucks. Yep. We got our drinks. We're Me good. Too. All right, now uh, let's hit the road. I'm sure about this pineapple thing. No? <laughs> good thing I have a three quarters of a gallon of it. Mm. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll trade one of my, mm. what? what is this? Peach, my peach citrus for, for one of your pineapple. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I like the pineapple. Mm. It's not bad. So, you could watch a million truck reviews mm. of this truck. I and did. lots of them are towing things, climbing mm. mountains, going off road, fording rivers, mm. all those things, which are very exciting. That's what I do on the weekend. But most people who buy this truck, they're going to tow yeah. 75% That's true, of uh, uh, heavy-duty truck owners will tow at least once a month Yep. versus about 25% for light-duty. Because realistically, that's a major reason yeah. why you buy so you a truck. buy this, yes. And, and inside, this is a, you know, not a lot bigger than the, uh, than the light-duty. No. The cabin space is actually fairly equitable. Yeah, so they're about the same. Um, so you tow, but you also drive on normal roads a lot. You drive to work. And so uh, we're going to test that out. Yeah. And see how it does. Uh, first impressions, I think uh, rides a little rough. Well, yeah. So I talked about this you know, to you before when we picked it up. It rides rough because there's nothing in the bed. That's the thing about heavy duty trucks. They tend to be a little bit uh, bouncy until you put something in the bed. Yeah. And this has nothing in the bed. Yep. And it's not towing anything, um, and it's not doing any of that, which is uh, pretty normal, I think. It is. Most people don't have a thousand-pound load in the back, even though the car, the truck, excuse me, would quiet down if you did that. Yeah. So, so you don't have that. It's not a bad ride compared to a truck from 10, 15, 20 years ago. But we're not comparing it to 15 years ago. We're no. comparing to today. No, but if you have an old truck and you try yeah. a new one, you're going to think it's much better. Sure. It's, it's all relative. Um, what is a lot better is all of the luxury accoutrements. There's a reason why the price tag of trucks nowadays is in luxury car territory. And this truck is? $75,000, I yes. think. Seven, uh, almost. With It's more like seventy-four, I guess. Seventy-four one hundred and ten. excuse okay. me. 74110 and this is the Lariat. Right. Which is we, like the middle trim. Yeah, we're not even into luxury truck territory yet. Here. Yeah, okay, so let's see if we can remember all of the trim levels from Ford, okay? I think XL. Yep. XLT. Yeah. Lariat. Yeah. Where we are now. So it's number three trim level. Yep. King Ranch. Yep. Platinum. Yeah. Limited. Yes. That's a lot. It's a lot of And trims. that means there are three above this one. For seventy four thousand dollars. Um, not only are there a lot of trim levels, you can configure this way thing in so many different ways. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, pick your cab, you know. Yeah, you got three cab, you got the, the the regular front cab, like work truck cab. Yeah. And then you got the super crew or super super cab, super super something yeah. with the, the, the super cab, yeah. Yeah, super cab. And then you got the crew cab, which is this. Right. Which is for normal people, I think, the one they go for because this is makes it more of a family hauler. I mean, it really depends upon this, what you're doing. If you have kids, you definitely get this. Um, if you're a, a guy without kids and you just want some space to throw stuff in the back seat, you know, like I do, then you get the extended cab. You don't go with the full crew cab. Yeah, and I think basically which truck you get depends on what you're going to do with it, and what you're going to do with it can really depend. Oh, we haven't even gotten to all the things we can quit. We haven't even talked about do we want a diesel or a gas engine? Yes. Do you want the off road package? Yes. A plow prep package? Tail it, you, uh, you can choose gearing. Yeah. You can choose, do you want snow plow prep? Do you want tow prep? Do you want fifth wheel tow prep? Do you want locking differentials? Yes. Uh, if you get the 350 or the 450, you can get a single rear wheel or dual rear wheel. Oh, I forgot about the dually. Yeah, you man. get the dually. Get even bigger. Yeah. Um, and then you can get, there's a, uh, there are two bed sizes. Yes. You can choose from. Well, this, I believe, is the two. shorter one. Yeah. Yeah, that... So there's a million different ways you can spec it out. Um, and it's it's incredibly impressive that you can basically start with the basic XL 
I work for the power company work truck. Yeah. At thirty-eight thousand dollars or something in the F two fifty. Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, and then you can spec it all up. And the limited, which basically has every option box checked, and you can check all of them and then check them again. And it includes everything um, for pushing ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. And so sixty thousand dollars worth of options, basically. Yeah. And that's all those. How great is you triple the price of the vehicle by checking boxes? Right. So this has some good stuff in the options list, right? There's a lot of good stuff. The diesel's the big one. Yeah, that's nine grand for the diesel. Yeah, nine grand for the diesel. Um, It's a very good diesel. It has uh, lots of of horsepowers and torques and things. It does not have uh, more than a thousand like the Ram does. The new Ram, which came out more recently. This is like 900 torques, I think. Well, it's, yeah, it's 940 or 939, something crazy. Plenty. Yeah. Um, you know, because at that level, you're really getting into a, a literal dick measuring contest of who, oh, well, mine tows 32,300 pounds and yours only tows 32,100. And it's like, yeah, okay, I fine. can only tow an entire convenience store. Like, really? Yeah, exactly. I can't, you know, tow, yeah, I can only tow three double wides at once, not four. Or something. <laughs> it's, you know, it's crazy. Um, so it tows tons. Um, but. Yeah, 15 of them. Yeah, exactly. It tows <laughs> so much. Um. So, so that doesn't even matter. And so for this, like, okay, you want to talk about, like, passing. This is designed to pass and go from, like, 55 to 75 while you're towing your massive, heavy load of whatever. Uphill. Uphill, right. So, okay, so go 55, put your foot down, and it thinks for a second, and then... Oh, it's a turbo diesel. You got that turbo. It just goes. Yeah. Forever. It'll just pull until you hit the limiter, which is probably 100 miles an hour or something. Um, zero to 60 is remarkably quick. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not bad if you're going in a straight line on the highway, even though here on flat pavement on the highway, it feels a little bouncy with everything you hit. You, you do feel every little crack and bump and whatever. Yeah. But it's And it's a truck, and that's what you're going to do. If you want... It's a heavy-duty truck. If you want a smoother ride, go buy a Navigator. You want a smoother ride? Just even the F-150 is just a much more comfortable ride. Any of the light-duty trucks are better for daily commuting, but they're not going to tow your boat on the weekend, and that's really what it comes down to. Is if you buy this truck, you're plowing or you're towing, or I don't know. And you're not just towing; you're back. towing a lot. Yeah, towing something heavy, you're, um, you, like north of ten thousand pounds. Yeah, or you want to, but no, I think I think most people who buy this are towing. Um, because that's really the difference between this and the other one. Unless you really want a diesel or something. I don't yeah. know. Um, but you can get diesels in the light duties now. Yes, you can. Um, yeah, so, okay, so it's big. You're going to tow stuff. But, or, it's going to be your work truck. Which is why it has all sorts of accoutrements to make living in here eight hours a day or more a, a nice place to be. Most pickups, whether they be light or heavy duty, have those things you need to work. Yes. This one, should we go down the list of the things here on the interior that make your life a little bit better? Oh, lots of things that make my life better. Um, we can start from the top and work our way down. Yes. Modern infotainment system. Yep. Decent screen, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all of the things that you need for modern yes. infotainment right Nice here. stereo. Sounds good. Yep. You got a big bin. Yep. Bin for things. That's going to be a trend. Bin for things. There's a, there's a lot of things there's, there's storage. Bins, bins, yes. All right, you start going down. Cl- knobs yep. and buttons. Brilliant. Brilliant. I yep. mean, buttons, you... knobs. Okay, auto. Uh, this one has got one of the packages. I don't even know which one it is. That includes uh, cooled seats. Yeah. So you get cooled seats. Important on a hot day in yep. Texas when you're sitting there on the job site or whatever. Important on a hot day anywhere. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. We do get hot days. You get the bin for storage here. There's a bin storage with two great. USB uh, outlets. Plenty to shove a couple cell phones in there, charge them and close them and keep them out of reach. Yes, because you want, if this is a work truck, mm. you want your employees to not text and drive. It's true. You got a 12 volt and a regular AC outlet right here in front of you. Mm-hmm. We have... Sorry, so we got two USB yep. ports. Yeah. We got a 12 volt. Yeah. We got an AC power outlet. Yeah. Two USB... Uh, then in here is a 12 volt. Okay. And then uh, in the back, you have another 110 power outlet. Yep, I saw that. And two more USB ports and another 12-volt power outlet. For your kids when they want their toys in the back. I kids, get it. Or your employees, which are basically your kids, right? You Probably. Yeah. 
Um, and so you got all that, and uh, and then a lot more besides. So you got in here, in this giant thing. Yeah. You have storage. There's a place for pens. Yes. It even says pens right it there. Does. It embedded says right in on the there. plastic. It says pens. Place to store your business cards, and this is precisely the right size to fit hanging file folders. I get it. If you're going to the you know site to site, if you have customers who are a contractor, you got to put your estimates in there somewhere to file when you get home. Yeah. Makes complete sense to me. Uh, I will say, it's about the right width I, I would want for space. The front seat's space enough. The back seat's enormous, honestly. Yeah, if you had to sit there with a laptop, yeah, you could do it, no problem. No problem. You got a, a big uh, glove compartments. Yep. Yeah, so from a comfort perspective, other than the ride, which if you load it full of stuff, is going to be much better. You know, to be determined, but it can't get... Yes, it's got to get better. And it's not uncommon with these heavy-duty trucks. They get bouncy. Yeah, and so this has the uh, other packages buried in there. Uh, yep. So it's got the, the $10,000 um, diesel engine, yeah. which is nice. 6.7 liter turbo diesel yep. power stroke. V8, yep. All that. Um, and then we got some other stuff. There's a... There's a technology bundle and a multimedia package, which I would have to look up what they do. What are they... Well, so I can look them up and we'll put up the details. So what, what are the packages here? I think the here? technology bundle includes adaptive steering and... Oh, is that the, oh it's the, that's the tow technology bundle, the tow, Well, you know, that might be... It's exactly a little cutoff, yeah. It is a little stripey, like their printer was running out of ink when it came out. Yeah. Um, and how much is that? 1970. So 1970 for the tow bundle, and it's then... the Lariat... Ultimate package? Yes, that one's got all the Lux stuff in it. There's some remote start, some kind of lighting system, but I have no idea what that says. Yeah, so Tailgate there's, stuff. So there's, I think, the Lariat uh, Ultimate package, and then there's another Lariat package in there. And basically, yeah. so you can go through on the F-250 website, and you can check all this stuff off, and it'll explain it. Yeah. And Ford puts a lot of stuff in their packages. And so, like, that Lariat Ultimate package is, like, $4,000. But it includes like the bigger screen yeah. here and the uh, power seats and the power uh, uh, pedals that move forward and back. So if you're shorter or taller or whatever, you can adjust those. Yeah. Um, you get stuff like the, the rear um, sliding, power sliding window, things like that. Yeah. Um, and so those are in there and those are all big bucks. Big, big bucks. Yeah. But there is another package in there that's very good. There's a safety package. Yes. And so this, full-size, uh, super duty, heavy-duty pickup. Um, they call it Super Duty, which is almost like an entire brand into itself these yes, days. Yes, it is. Um, so we've got adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, mm -hmm. uh, lane departure. I don't think it, it will actually, well, let's, let's see, will it steer us back? No, no steering back because it's not. But it vibrates. If I go into okay. lane, it vibrates the wheel. Okay. If I depart the lane, and it'll push you back. Blind spot monitoring and trailer blind spot monitoring. So it extends handy, the yeah. blind spot a lot further if you have a trailer up. This thing is really a trailer-centric vehicle. It's yeah. got all the things you want to tow. Yeah, it is definitely rigged to tow. Um, we got so a knob to switch from too high to four high to four low. You can pull on it to lock the rear diff, and then you have the manually which, locking hubs which, for the front. i got to be honest, is a little annoying to me that you can get a lot of vehicles that have automatic four-wheel drive, and you know, you're automatic locking diff. If you get a Chevy, it's got the I G80 rear locker. I would suspect the reason that Ford would say is because if you're buying this truck, you want total control over what you're doing. I'm going to guess that is what they're... Well, you know, it, on my Chevy, right, I have control over what I'm doing. And this, I the 2500, right, that's, that even has the automatic four-wheel drive. And if you don't want an automatic four-wheel drive, you can tell it too high or four high. Yep. But it gives you the option. This, no option. And it's, I mean, I gotta be honest, the automatic four drive is like one of the favorite things about my truck. It works superb. So you don't see, so it'll leave it in four wheel if you want, and then, yeah. yeah. Okay. But you have a, you have the, the 1500. Yeah, but the family, the family also has a 2500 that has the auto four on the 2500 heavy duty silver oh, Well, we could ask them about it. Yeah. Figure it out. But I think ultimately that's like a, neither, neither here nor there. Um, so, uh, you know, as you move up in the, um, trim levels. You can get a few things. You get a uh, sunroof. Yeah. Giant sunroof, which is like, okay, whatever. Um, they offer massaging seats. Clearly very important. I mean, while you're putting in the bells, why not yeah. throw that one in um, while you're at it? Uh, nicer leather. Mm. I mean, this is, is nice, but it, it clearly could be nicer. You could do King Ranch. It doesn't have, you know, off-roady 
things. No, and there are some hard no. plastics around here. I yeah, inside. There. But, you know, it's a truck. And uh, I just... I personally, I think Lariat is the sweet spot on Ford's oh, absolutely. The, truck because you get all the luxury stuff that you need. The fit and finish is really nice. It's not like a fingerprint magnet like a lot of things are. Like, everything is matte surfaces, which is nice because it's a truck and you're going to get it dirty. Yep. I mean, if you ask me, every truck you should be able to rinse out with a fire hose. So, uh, interesting thing there. You can spec it with a vinyl floor. All, all the, way. the way up to, like, the top of line King Ranch stuff. Because if you're... The, the rancher and you're getting you got your cowboy boots on and you're getting muddy and you're getting in your truck I'm not you even a rancher clean it out. but when I spec my truck if I had custom ordered I would have gotten the vinyl floor yep because it's like people spend all this money on like the WeatherTech floor mats I want the whole thing to be out of WeatherTech floor mat yeah ceiling <laughs> floor the whole the, the entire truck yeah yeah exactly um, and I'll tell you one one thing that's nice is it actually is very easy to steer not surprising um, but a cool feature that's in this is something called adaptive steering, which is in one of those packages. I think it's the tow package is where it okay. is. Okay. And how this works, I tested this out uh, at the Super Duty launch a few years ago when this generation came out. There is a thing inside the steering column here, basically a whole bunch of gears. Yeah. And what it does is it on the fly adjusts how much steering input it takes to turn the wheels a particular distance. So at very low speeds, you don't have to turn the wheel very far to get a large amount of turn yeah. in the wheel, um, this you know steering wheel to the, to the front wheels. And then on the highway, turning the wheel doesn't move the wheels as much, so you get a smoother ride, mm -hmm. so you don't overcorrect. And uh, that's super clever. Yeah. So you turn the steering wheel when you're going slow trying to navigate a parking lot, or turn with your trailer, yeah. and you can turn very easily, and it makes your life a little easier. You don't have to spin the wheel quite as much. Yeah, because this thing is big. It feels big. You want it to help out with that. Yeah, and so that's a super cool feature, and they had us test it out on a little sort of mini autocross slalom course, yeah. and let me tell you, it like made a legit difference. Like, I don't know that... Look at this Look at this minivan up ahead of us. It looks dimin diminutive compared to this. Even that, Odyssey's not small. No, no, even that F-150 Our heads are above the roof. It's like visibly lower. Yes. <laughs> well, and so this has the off-road package, which cool. I think uh, makes it even a little bit more suspension travel, and it gets it up even a little higher. So yeah. we're definitely like towering over the road. Um, so if you want to uh, have a high seating position, which we know many people really like, they like that. Yeah. You could do this, though. Uh, I will tell you that not everyone can get into it very easily. Yeah. So I am a truck guy. I drive one every day, and I found myself using the grab handle to get into this truck, and it has running boards. I mean, it's up there. Yeah. And I'm six feet tall. Yeah. So it's uh, it's large. Yeah. Um, my uh, mother, who doesn't get around quite as well as she used to, mm. and is also quite short. Um, I, I had one of these once, and uh, I, I actually filmed a video that I will not put in here of her trying <laughs> to get into the truck. Um, and it's not that I wouldn't show it because it's embarrassing, but yeah. because of the amount of swears that were used. <laughs> uh, of her saying, can you please, you know, blankety blank, help me get into this truck and stop <laughs> filming me. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it is, it is very big, and so that's a trade-off. Um, this one doesn't have the power running boards. They are certainly available if you get into the higher trim levels. They'll, you know, move themselves in and out. I don't particularly care about the running boards moving in and out. I mean, I could get, get rid of running boards it's altogether. It's a style thing. It's, it's in a, you know what? These are far enough off the ground, it really doesn't matter. But in some trucks, when you drop on running boards, you start to get your ground clearance. Well, and so these, uh, you know, this is the off-road spec, so I'd imagine these ones maybe are designed to bang off stuff. What? Yeah, well, at least on the power running board, some of them get up and get out of the way to get help with that ground clearance. Yep. Again, it doesn't really matter. You have enough space here. Let's see how the uh, automatic cruise control works here. pretty good and they say it works even when you're towing really i probably would have braked a little bit earlier if i were towing but uh make yeah, sure to set the brake game correctly on yeah that. so you set that correctly um and it learns and and it does all the all that stuff but i mean that's a pretty cool thing if you were doing a cross-country tow which people will do if you're in a camper or you're doing horses okay. or whatever um having the automatic or adaptive cruise control for that super nice feature yeah um, so we're talking about the outside with the running boards. Uh, let's talk about something we might disagree a little bit on. The styling. Because I think this has a, a $3,000, uh, some sort of a styling package. It's got the tires and stuff on there, right? 
Lariat Sport Package. Yes, the Lariat Sport Package for how much? $3,300. $3,300, and it includes uh, all of these things that we're putting up on the screen. Uh, it's basically the 20-inch rims, which I think look great. They're black. They're very cool. Blackout stuff all around. Black logos on the on the sides. Yeah. I think it looks good. Normally, I'm not big on, on like, decorative packages like that. But by the time you're spending seventy-one thousand dollars, what's another three grand to make it look the way you want it to look? Uh, I, I'm never one that's big into these looks packages personally, and I actually am especially not into the blackout look. Some people love it, right? Yeah. They love the blackout packages. For me, I'm gonna say this in a little controversially. I like chrome. Like, look at the truck behind us. <sighs> yeah. It's a Ford. I think that's a Super Duty, an older one. Yeah. Got chrome. I, I like the shiny. You like the I, I like the shiny. Yeah. But uh, for people who want something a little different, it's pretty cool. I like it. Mm. Um, is it worth three grand? I don't know. That's up to you. That's why it's an option. That's why you check the box. Well, if you order it. And again, yeah. if you're getting this heavy duty truck and you don't need it tomorrow, order this thing. Because if it's so customizable, you're going to yeah. want all the little things. People who go to the lot and buy a heavy duty truck, you can often get stuck with several grand in options. And people say, well, maybe I can get a better deal because it's left on the lot. But, uh, but can you? Yeah, I mean, you, you're, I mean, it's a truck, so you're going to be able to negotiate somewhat. Um, yeah. But, you know, that $3,000 package, dealers are going to order it because they know people are going to be like, oh, that truck looks cool. I'll buy that. And it's a way to bid up the sale price. Yes. That's like huge amounts of profit buried in that. Yeah. Oh, let's. So uh, these these side markers are usually chrome on the, on the F-250 and 350 and whatever. And on this one, they're black. Okay. You think it costs them any more to make that? Of course not. No. But you'll pay it. But it looks cool. Yeah. <sighs> they change the color of the bit, and they charge you three grand for the black bit. Mm. Well, they charge you three grand for a bunch of stuff. But yeah, okay. But it's all. It's none of it is is functional. No, none of it's functional. Um, I mean, maybe the rims. Get a twenty instead of a. I don't even know what the what they moved up from. But yeah, it's. <sighs> I don't even. I, I don't even cosmetics. know what you get. When you go to a larger wheel in a vehicle like this, you have so much tire already. I mean, there's some off-road... Look how cool it looks. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that is essentially it. Yeah. I mean, you could argue that, oh, you have a little bit less sidewall if you're off-roading, but actually having that extra sidewall off-roading allows you to air down a little bit yeah. and get more play. Like. Yeah. Um, whereas then you could spend money on, like, the tow package, which includes things like, you know, the mirrors that extend themselves. Power okay. extending mirrors. So that's, like, a useful feature. Definitely buy the money for the tow package if you're going to tow. Well, you're going to buy this, which means you're going to tow, which means you should buy the tow package. Yep. Yeah. Integrated brake controller. It's important. Yeah. That's right here. Um, it's got on the screen. We haven't even gotten into the, the screen yet. Oh, so yeah. we could talk about that. So in here, um, you've got a million different things that it can show you. And so, you know, truck info, right? Okay. Transmission temp, uh, diesel exhaust fluid levels, tire pressure, digital speedometer, diesel exhaust fluid status because that's something mm -hmm. you got to keep an eye on yeah um what's your engine is done how many hours the engines run engine idle hours oil temperature transmission you know all this stuff and then you go over and you got a whole towing screen hmm. right towing status towing information trailer light check which is cool and i can't believe people didn't think of that before right where what it does is if you're one person hooking up a trailer you're supposed to check the trailer lights to make sure yeah. you hooked it up correctly make sure the lights aren't burned out whatever and usually, I would sit here, and you would go to the back, and I'd yell, oh, I'm turning on the left turn signal now, and you'd say, okay, looks good. And that'd be it. This one will automatically cycle through all the different lights that it needs to show. Which is super handy. Which is like, why didn't we come out with that before? I know. Because and that, that came out a few years ago. It's not a new thing now. If I, if, but, I, if I asked my wife to help me set up the trailer, she'd you just yell at me. Yeah. It wouldn't end well. Or you'd yell at her, or whatever. Yeah. That, is, that is towing in a nutshell. Yeah. Husbands and wives yelling at each other. Um, if you uh, have a trailer that's so equipped, it can tell you your trailer tire pressure. Yep. So you can do TP TPMS from the back. There's a whole trailer setup thing. There's a connection checklist to make sure you don't forget anything. On and on and on. Off-road indicators to tell you uh, what the angle of the front wheels yeah, are. Tilt, things place. like that. Yeah. It's like that stuff's cool. And then you get a million settings uh, for all the safety stuff. Yeah. It's got auto high beam, blind spot, cross traffic alert when you're backing up, driver alert to see if you're falling asleep, a rear park aid, which has got cameras. It's got a 360 view camera, yeah. which actually is one of the nicest ones I've seen. The it's quality good. is really good. Um, there's a camera up by the chimsel, as they call it in the, in the industry, the center high mounted stop lamp. Big words today, boys. Yep, chimsel. <laughs> um, and they put a camera up there that looks down into the bed. 
And so if you're backing up for a fifth wheel, which hooks up into the bed for people who don't tow, um, that helps you line up the fifth wheel. Or they have one that looks down at the tow hitch, so you can line up the tow hitch correctly from in here. Yeah. And there's a, an auxiliary camera that you can get that you can mount to the back of your trailer so you can see what's behind it when you're backing up. Yep. Brilliant. All this stuff, all this tech. Cruise control. Here's a feature that we liked. Distance to empty calculation. You can choose normal or, <laughs> or towing. towing. So let's see. Uh, 568 miles to empty. Or if we're towing, it's 543. I do have questions about how exactly that How that works. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it, I'm sure there's math. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Engineers, engineers built that. Um, you know, lane keeping, all this stuff. And then you can go in and you can customize all the things. Mm -hmm. You can configure. Vehicle must be stationary to access settings. Okay. But you can customize all this stuff. But do you know what you can't display at the same time? Oh. It's, our, it's our trifecta. It is. Let's test it with every car. You want digital speed, miles to empty. We have both of those. No temp temper, temperature. No outside temperature. You have to go onto the screen where it is yeah. here at the top. 80 degrees out right now. But if you're in CarPlay, just like on your Silverado. It is just like that. You can't see it. Drives so, me bananas. All right. So a bananas. Ding, a ding against Ford on there. It's a little thing, but it, it's one of the... It's, 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 yep. So we're going to keep bringing it up. That's our, that's our test. We got to see. Can bananas, guys. Like Bananas. This should be an easy thing. I got the... Um, so, you know, I got the, the compass, and I got what gear we're in. And the turbo PSI, which is completely meaningless, yeah, but that's would, on I there. I would trade that for a temperature and a heartbeat. Yeah, but you can't do it. You can go up there and, tr and change it for other things. Yeah. You know, if you want to see the def fluid amount or something like that, you can change those. Um, but you can't do. Oh, I actually might want to see that. That sounds somewhat useful. You can slowly watch it drop. Yeah. yeah so, so I have somewhere between zero and forty PSI right now. And that doesn't exist for anything except for you to watch it go up and down. Oh yeah, I mean. It's that is not a thing. functional, like, okay, oil uh, temperature and pressure and uh, transmission temperature, things like that. Those are useful things especially if you're, when you're towing. towing. Yeah. yeah, especially, you know, climbing grades or you're out west or whatever. Yeah. Turbo PSI? What? I don't need to know that. I don't definitely That's need to know silly. that. silly. So, fine. All right, so Ford, fix that. Um, yeah, other than that, it's got some other cool features that are kind of neat if you're... Uh, if you're going camping or something, you've got these exterior uh, lights that illuminate on the mirrors. So you can illuminate your campground, which is pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, other than that, it tows really heavy stuff well and it's comfy. You've got cool, his seat heaters and coolers, but yeah. you, can't, it's you, can't, no BMW. you can't heat and cool at the same time. I know the engineers are going to be like, why would you Why would you want to do that? Because so, I want to, all right? This is America. <laughs> I should be able to heat and cool my seat at the why, same yeah, time. Why can the Germans do it, but Americans can't? Right. What, what does Germany have that we don't? A heated and cooled seats yeah, at the same exactly. time. Yeah, exactly. And that car has more horsepower than this one. Does it? That had 550 in the BMW You're 850. You're asking the wrong know. thing. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. It's a diesel. It's not yeah. the horsepower. It's the, the torque. torque. definitely has more torque. <laughs> Um, and uh, one of the favorite um, diesel features is that when you park it, it goes rumble, rumble, rumble. I do like that rumble. Which is kind of cool. I mean, diesel's totally cool. I don't know why you would get a heavy duty with a gas engine, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, I don't know. That bike's got a lot of horsepower. Um, yeah, and actually, you can equip this in the sport truck format, which is uh, two-wheel drive with the short bed and the single cab, so it's as light as possible. Yes. With the diesel engine. All and the it, torques? Yes, because it, it's the same amount of, of power as this, because it's the same engine. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, zero to 60, it's some absurd thing, like, under five seconds. And so, you know, they spec the, the sport truck version. Sure. But, I mean, whatever, why would you do that? You could do it. I, I, I honestly have no idea why you would do it. I'm sure one guy once did. Yeah, but they, uh, Ford thinks it's funny, so yeah. it works for me. Um, but other than that, you're, uh, you're riding along in traffic. This is a nice place to... Uh, I always say that it's like a nice place to be, but it is. I mean, it says you, super duty, if so you, you, if you forget what truck you're in. If you need the capability of a heavy-duty truck because you're towing everything, it's not a bad thing to have. If you don't need to tow or plow, it's a little much. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's sort of the heavy-duty pickup 
in general. And yeah. so you decide, do you want uh, a, a 150 or a 1500, depending on what brand you're buying, or do you want the 2500, 3500? And that really depends on whether you're going to tow or not. That's the difference. Or tow plow. or plow. plow. Tow yeah. or plow. Yeah. Um, and if you're not, get the smaller one. Yep. And then, you know, F-150 or Silverado, Sierra, Ram, whatever. Or do you get the heavy-duty one? Uh, the new Silverado and Sierra HDs come out uh, later this year. Yes. The Ram 2500 and 3500 came out, I think, last year. They're newish. Um, and then the Super Duty is a couple years 2017, older. 2017, yeah. Um, yeah, something like that. Then this one, I think, came out in 2016. So, you know, they're, they're all relatively new. They've all got similar tech. Uh, and really, it's just... I like the look of this one better. You know, yeah, I was thinking that. This might be, in the Super Duty trim, this might be my favorite looking truck of them all. Yes, I agree. I mean, yeah, definitely. With the cool blackout package. It looks really good. I get the idea of, like, I wish it just came that way and I didn't have to pay $3,000 for it. Oh, that, take... I don't like the... I'm sorry, give me you chrome, want chrome or give me I know me you that. want chrome. Well... Fine. So you like the Super Duty in general. Yeah. I like this Super Duty <laughs> with the blackout package. I think it looks cool. Oh, no. I have finished. My Starbucks is empty. Good thing you have another. Whatever will I do? Oh, <laughs> good thing. I have one more. So then the only other thing we got to talk about, I think, is the cup holders. Because that's an essential uh, enjoyment element of do you have enough places to put your drinks i would literally not buy a truck if it didn't have a couple yes so this one let's count we got one two three four yeah. five six yeah. in the front doors we have seven and eight yeah we could put a can or a bottle back there yep in the back we have nine and ten yeah ten cup holders for a vehicle with five seats that's pretty good and that is america <laughs> and this truck is america and if you like America, you should like and subscribe and click the little alarm bell thing to get notified of new videos. And post uh, comments. Comment. Ask us questions and we will answer them. Tell us how we're wrong uh, because I'm sure we are because yep. this is the internet and people think we're wrong. I think I'm a married man. I know all about being wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we should get her. She could put all the honey-do list right in the comment she, section. She could. You would be more likely to read it. Oh, I probably would be more likely to ignore it. Are you kidding no, you're going to ignore it either way, but the mm. question is whether you look at it and ignore it or yeah. just... Oh, yeah, it's another message from her. Yeah. Oh, well. So, uh, the, uh, the last time I had a Super Duty, I loaded it full of bark mulch up to the top. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I put, I put bark mulch in heavy duty truck for it. Perfect yep. for that. It was great. Um, I also loaded something like 42 bales of hay, which was extremely impressive. Yes. And, uh, and it looks good. That was, uh, that was a couple years ago, but I... I do use my trucks for their intended purpose. And when I sent the pictures to the Ford PR team, they thought it was hysterical. Because so many journalists get trucks and then don't actually use them as trucks. Yeah. And so he was like so thrilled. But I made a mess of it. I bet you did. It was so dirty. Um, but it was good. Yeah. The truck did well. So uh, I don't think we're going to be loading up any bark mulch or uh, bales of hay this time. But know that it can do it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, on that note, uh, we're done. Bye, guys. Bye.